Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. When I was making a custom tap recently, I needed a jack to solve a specific problem. The end of the narrow diameter part needed to be supported well above the table while I milled the flutes. In other words, I needed a tall machinist jack that could support a small diameter shaft. I cobbled something together from bits of scrap to do the job, and this video goes through how I made it. I started out with the length of EN1A PB leaded mild steel. This free machining grate isn't much use for long lived tools, but it's really easy to work with and great for quick jigs and fixtures. My first focus was making the top of the jack, which needed some kind of feature to sit securely under the narrow diameter of the tap. I decided on a small V-groove, though obviously the stock needed to be cleaned up and faced first. To mill a V-shaped groove I needed to set the part up at 45 degrees on the mill. I used a V-block to make sure I had solid three-point contact on the round bar in the vise. This is a temporary fixture, so the 45 degree angle of the V-groove doesn't need to be that precise. I aligned the vertical edge of the protractor with the spindle by eye. The standard end mill provides the right 90 degree corner shape. I started on center and then advanced the vertical and horizontal feed the same amount for each pass. This made cutting a little more noise than usual, but it meant that I didn't need to decide in advance how big I wanted the groove to be. Free machining leaded steel cuts much more easily than most steels I use, and didn't seem to need lubrication until the cuts got a bit deeper. Test fit. Getting close, but needs to be a bit deeper to make stable contact. The groove has reached the right size, so one final shallow pass to clean up the finish. A part so narrow and flexible probably won't be stable supported only from below, so I decided to also clamp it in place from above. To hold the clamps I drilled and tapped two holes on either side of the groove. Instead of laying out the position of the holes with layout fluid or a centre punch, I squared the groove up with the table and used the x-axis scale to set out the positions. A spotting drill avoids the need for a centre punch as it can start a hole accurately on a flat surface. This one has a 120 degree point to match the grind on my twist drill set. I chose M4 because I thought I had plenty of M4 hardware kicking around, though we'll see later that wasn't quite as true as I hoped. Twist drills tend to cut a little oversize unless the grind is perfect, so this 3.5mm twist drill is a little loose for an M4 thread. This shouldn't matter though, as the thread doesn't need to stand up to a lot of force or be especially long lasting. I tracked the table across using the scale on the handwheel to measure the distance. This was easily accurate enough to ensure that the correct spacing would also be drilled into the clamp, and it wasn't critical that the holes were exactly centred in either direction. Mm -hmm. 
I use the spindle to align the tap to make sure it cut the thread nice and straight. It's easy for the tap to get misaligned in softer material. Normally when I use this kind of tap on blind holes the chips get packed into the bottom of the hole and the taps get stiffer as the chips build up. These holes were so oversized that the chips cleared more easily and there was no such problem. Up until now I'd machined all of these features into the end of a larger piece of stock to make work holding easier and more secure. At this point it was time to part off the jack cap from the rest of the stock, but to do that meant doing one more operation first. Parting on a very small lathe is risky as the machine isn't quite as rigid as its heavier cousins. Parting all the way to the centre of a round bar makes it even more risky. The closer the tool gets to the centre, the slower the cutting speed gets, which can make it hard for the material to cut. Any error in the tool height is also emphasised close to the centre of rotation and can cause the tool to catch break and potentially ruin the part. To avoid this risk I drilled a hole through the stock first. This hole doesn't cause any harm because features need to be drilled through both the remaining stock to form the main body of the jack and into the bottom of the cap. I used a 5mm twist drill which is the correct tap drill size for the M6 thread I plan to use for the jack. The hole needed to be long enough to pass through the entire length of the body and just the right depth in the cap without breaking through and damaging the v-groove. I also had to allow for the width of the parting tool. I marked the twist drill with a sharpie at the correct depth and stopped there. It made sense to tap the thread as well while everything was still set up straight and true in the lathe. I helped align the tap for all the threads in this video using the tap follower I made a couple of years ago. Tapping a thread raises a burr around the thread hole, so it needed to be faced again. Now that the hole was drilled most of the length, it was much easier to use a parting tool to separate the cap of the jack from the tapped body. The cap needed enough length to sit securely on the head of the main jack screw and also allow for the full length of the clamping holes. This was a very easy parting operation. The free machining steel needed very little lubrication and there was no sign of chatter. I always try and avoid allowing the parted material to drop into the chips. It's really easy to put an unsightly ding into the metal and ruin what should have been a perfect looking part. Even the smoothest parting leaves an imperfect finish, so I faced the end. I had chosen an 8mm screw head diameter which needs to fit snugly for the jack to be stable. To ensure a good fit I drilled the pocket in the cap to 7.5mm and then reamed it out to 8mm. For a hole this shallow I could control the depth by counting the number of turns on the tailstock feed. Finally I used this high speed steel end mill to square the end of the hole. The hole needs to be flat at least at the edge to ensure it sits securely on the jack screw head. To save time I decided to use a stock M6 cap head machine screw for the main jack screw. 303 stainless steel is a pain to machine however. It feels gummy and produces a very stringy chip which tends to tangle up really easily. I needed to stop the lathe frequently to clear it. 
It would seem to make sense just to use the original standard diameter of the cap head screw, but there are a couple of reasons why I didn't. M6 cap heads have a standard head size around 10mm, but an extremely loose tolerance. They also tend to be very cheaply mass produced, and the head is often very non-concentric with the screw thread. To get a precise concentric head diameter, I needed to turn it down, so I decided on an 8mm diameter. I also faced the top of the screw head, so it would rest firmly against the flat surface at the end of the hole in the cap. The hole in the cap won't be perfectly square, so to ensure the screw head would fit snugly, I deburred it and put a slight radius around the edge with a file. I was happy with the result. The cap sat stably in place and rotated freely, allowing the jack to be raised and lowered without affecting the angle of the groove. The final part to make the jack work was the clamp for the top. I used a small piece of 6mm aluminium square scrap to make the third part of the three point contact from above. The hole spacing needed to match the holes in the jack cap, but as I already used the hand scales on the mill to locate those holes, I knew I could use the same scales for these holes and be reasonably sure of a match. I turned out to only have one size of M4 screw that could work, but it was oversized. I needed to get the tap project completed for Emma's competition, so I skipped shortening the screws and just stacked up some washers. I used some nuts on the screw shaft to make it easier to adjust and lock to the base. The jack I needed to finish making the tap was now complete. You can watch how well it worked to keep the part steady in the full tap build video. Click the link at the top right now. I'd originally intended the jack to be a temporary fixture which would probably go back into the scrap pile, but it worked so well I decided to add it to my toolbox instead. To make it into a more useful permanent tool, it made sense to make a few upgrades. The nuts used to adjust and lock the height are very fiddly, so I decided to replace them with larger finger operated adjustments. To adjust the height, there needed to be a knurled wheel attached near the top. To lock it, I needed a similar diameter nut at the other end of the screw. I chose this 20mm brass stock as it's just a little larger than the jack diameter, and the colour contrast would make the tool look a bit nicer. The adjusters needed to be drilled, reamed and tapped with an M6 thread to fit the screw, just like the tap body. The first adjustment wheel needs to be tightened against the screw head, so you need a 6mm relief near the top, as the screw thread isn't complete up to the head. This wheel also needs a relief on the top face because the screw head is slightly shorter than the pocket it fits into. I want the jack to be resting only on the top surface of the screw head, not the face of the adjustment wheel, as the adjustment wheel may not be true.
The protruding diameter is under 8mm, but I did a quick manual check to ensure it fit cleanly inside the pocket in the cap of the jack. A good adjustment wheel needs to be knurled to make it easy to use, but my clamp type knurling tool can't open far enough for this diameter of part, so I resorted to trying a straight knurl. I briefly touched the tool against the chuck jaws here and was lucky to get away without doing any damage. Doing a straight knurl requires a lot of side force which can make it very difficult on a small lathe. Knurling leaves a very rough corner so I cleaned that up with a chamfer tool. It was now time to part off the two wheels from the stock. I touched the tool against the face and then used the scale on the wheel to feed in the width of the cutter and 3mm for the width of the wheel. To begin with, the tool made a lot of noise as it cut through the knurls, but thankfully sounded a lot better when it reached solid material. The brass was also easy to part off, especially with a threaded hole at the centre. An easy way to remove the large burr left by parting is to place it between vice jaws and pinch it off. The clean corners of the vice jaws remove the burr pretty easily. The top adjustment wheel fit perfectly against the cap and off camera I used Loctite 638 to make sure it stayed there. The locking wheel was also a good fit. As a final touch I bought some countersunk machine screws the right length and drilled a countersink into the top of the clamp. This gave the clamp the lowest possible clearance, making the tool more flexible. This tool has already served me well during the tap project, so it's good to know it'll be to hand for future projects. Check back soon for the next stage of restoring the Bowley lathe threads.